Our B movie is a real B movie, made with a fair budget and a blatant disregard for believability. In fact, we spent less money making this movie than you'll spend to see it. With those gruesome thrills you love, and enough good parts to fill a preview. Advantage of the TV! No one under 17 admitted without a ticket. Was it Proctor's idea to do it as a trailer? Uh, I don't, man, I don't remember. Because that, that was a good like, idea. It sounds like something I might suggest. Because yeah, trailers that would have been that would have been the brilliant suggestion. Nothing but good scenes. Rolling and recording. Rich Proctor. That's P-R-O-C-T-E-R. <laughs> if you really want to know how strange life is and how you never know what's around the next corner, I got. I was in the Groundlings with Pee Wee Herman and Phil Hartman. I had been working as part of a two-man morning comedy radio team at uh, KML 106 Go For It. 106 FM, rock in the bay. We lasted exactly three months. I ought to fire you. The reason we were bounced is because we were a bit more irreverent than what they were looking for. Do you sometimes wish there were a way of watching TV and films faster? Tony Rosamano, a mutual friend of ours, who was a newsman at Camel, introduced uh, me to Eric. Eric Nelson had heard our show. Eric said, there's this new company called Video West. You want to come over and see what we're doing? And we said, well, uh, uh, considering we have no other job offers and are all starving to death and are uh, contemplating uh, going to work as uh, temporary secretaries, yeah, sure, let's do that. The great thing about Video West, the thing I loved about it from the first moment, is I could tell that this was a group of cultural gangsters. This was a group of people who, you know, unfettered by having things like budgets and uh, adult supervision, were willing to absolutely try anything and had that kind of anarchic sense of humor that uh, a lot of people pretend they have, but when you actually see it show up, you, you know what it is. And so I said, these are my people. We can, I can, I, I can, I can have some fun here. Eric uh, wanted to do a series of like an interstitial commercial kind of things, fake commercials. And uh, uh, we were well equipped to do that because that's what we've been doing on the air. So I came up one, one weekend and, and it was a total guerrilla shoot. It was like set up, shoot, spot, break down, go out, shoot another spot, and keep going. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm gonna keep going till you tell me to stop. We did a spot called Mr. Wine. And Mr. Wine was a fake commercial. You, you got a device, like a kind of a KTEL device that you screw onto your tap that would make wine. But the piece began with my partner, Mark Ward, dressed as Jesus Christ. And it began with, you would have to be Jesus Christ to turn water into wine. But not anymore. Now there's Mr. Wine from Scamco. If you're tired of paying one, two, or even two and a half dollars for a gallon of wine, now there's hope. Because Mr. Wine can turn your kitchen tap into a winery as simple as one, two, three. Mr. Wine comes in three outstanding varieties. Burgundy, Chablis, and new Cabernet Sauvignon. We did the Carruthers Brothers Identical Twin Used Recreational Vehicle Dealers. Hi friends, I'm Harley Carruthers. And I'm Farley Carruthers. And, and we're the Carruthers, Carruthers Brothers Identical, Identical Twin Used Recreational Vehicle Dealers in Encino, California. California. You couldn't buy just one recreational vehicle, you had to buy two recreational vehicles because we only sold them in pairs just like ourselves. How do we sell these recreational vehicles at How such do we sell these recreational vehicles prices? at such incredible rock bottom prices? Just one word friends. Volume! Our commercials are louder than anyone else's. In fact, we've got so many cars on our, on our enormous, enormous lot that the ones in the back got to have Arizona license plates. <laughs> My partner, Mr. Ward, also played a character named Fast Eddie. Hi, kids! This is Fast Eddie for Midnight Stereo. At that point on television, uh, there were stereo dealers uh, right and left. The number one question people ask this cowboy is Eddie. How can you sell top of the line, big name, stereo components at such unbelievably low, below wholesale prices? Easy! I don't deal with a lot of middlemen, jobbers, and company reps. I cut my overhead to the bone by stealing this stuff off of railway cars in Los Angeles. That way I can pass the savings on to you. We shot three of our best bits in the same day. Video West was okay, yeah, that was, this is just how we do it. And we said, okay, uh, we're game, let's go. I thought it was great. What I learned at Video West is that if you set up things in the right way, anything is possible. That is most of the barriers you have. Hold on, hold on, we're, uh, we're gonna have to wait for that plane to go by. <laughs> While we're waiting, Eric, uh, there's one thing that nobody talked about if you would be willing to jump back in, and that is that we worked hard, but we also partied hard. 
almost every weekend there was a huge party yeah. if you want to get back in when it went because I don't think Richard was there so much. No, no. Stuff. You're going to have to repeat all that because Eric stepped around the corner to talk to that guy. Oh, that, no. <laughs> <laughs> My memory of Video West is that it was a creative paradise in the sense that there was nothing in the way of smart, talented people doing what they wanted. I knew enough at that time that this probably wouldn't last, and uh, I better take advantage of this while it was, it was still going. I was only there a little bit, but I'm really, really happy that I was even just a tiny little part of it. <laughs>